I'll grab the AED. You grab the trauma pack. All right. I said get the trauma pack! That's the bird kit! The big orange backpack! Get the O2 ready and grab a BVM. Where's the BVM? Grab the VVAC. Where's the VVAC? This last scenario is a prime example of what could happen if someone's not aware that they're in their lizard brain. Let me explain lizard brain real briefly. What typically happens when somebody gets very excited and nervous, as in a major medical, especially when someone is new at doing it, the frontal lobe of the brain sort of shuts down and there's another deeper part of our brain that is activated. It's the fight or flight response that becomes excited when we become very nervous. When it comes to major trauma responses, the trauma pack is our lifeline. It's a requirement of the job to know the trauma pack inside and out. For the remainder of this video, I will go over the basic essentials you need to know so you can overcome lizard brain effectively and save a life. Trauma packs are set up so that they're easily accessed. The back straps face forward and are easily accessible so that you can just put them on your back right from the get-go. On other vehicles, the trauma pack is set up in one of these back places. And when you uh, pull them out, make sure you pull them out carefully so that the straps come out first and you can put the straps on as you go. Watch your back. Don't get injured. Consistency is very important when packing the trauma pack. If you have everything packed in the same way for every bag, it minimizes lizard brain training. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to put these aside. I'm going to start with the main compartment, which is really the most important compartment because it includes all the ABCs, uh, the equipment for the uh, ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. When you open this bag, the first thing that you will have is bleeding control is up here at the top. You pull this down and you should have a lot of pads here for major bleeding control. This isn't just for a cut finger, of course. You should have at least one Asherman, if not two, and if not Asherman's occlusive dressings for gunshot wounds, especially to the chest. These Asherman seals uh, usually do wonders with gunshot wounds to the chest because it compartmentalizes the pressure difference in the lungs for pneumothorax. You have a major pad here, if you, in case you have an evisceration, which, uh, which is guts basically hanging out. And uh, this splint is not only just for minor broken arms, but when you have uh, gunshot wounds or you have trauma, sometimes splints are real handy that come along with major bleeding because you can splint it and uh, take care of the bleeding. So every, every bleeding thing that you might need is right here. Scissors, of course, are handy as glucose for medical emergencies and cutting clothes. You have a mask, if not two, to protect yourself. And you have a bag here so after the incident you can put all the trash, uh, biohazard uh, trash, in a biohazard bag. This is also part of bleeding and these are gauze pads that you can quickly pull out. So just think of this part mainly as the bleeding part. If you go to uh, the bottom section here, you have the airway. These blankets are uh, great for use of shock, but 
Also, to put your knees on, on them, if you don't need to use them, you can put your knees on them so that you can save your knees. The O2 bag, you have your O2 bottle. It's really easy to check, of course. We all know how to do that, lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. So if you loosen it up, you should have, you should be in the green or close to it. That's a quick way to check. And to release the, uh, the O2, I put it to 25 and it'll just quickly put the needle back down. This is NPA, OPA, nasal pharyngeal airway and oral pharyngeal airways are marked inside this main compartment and you should periodically check these to make sure that you have every size and you have lubrication for the nasal pharyngeal airway and of course your oral pharyngeal airways most of them are color coded now so you should uh, be able to know how to do that this is an important item right here in the uh, administration of oxygen and airway uh, clearing because once you when you have vomit this is what's gonna pull the vomit out make sure that there's a rubber band on here because this is the way you measure from the tip of the mouth to the ear this is how far you can go how deep you can go with your VVAC so make sure you have a rubber band here also make sure that you have one of these these are suction catheters and they're used for infants can be placed on the tip of this VVAC and this little tube will be able to be small enough to be used on an infant. So when you check your bag, make sure you have all of these things. Typically I like to have at least two or three non-rebreathing masks for adults here. These I put in here because they're protected. Don't, com don't squish them together because they this plastic sort of has a memory, so if you compress them too much, uh, it'll be very hard to get it to where you want it when you put it on somebody's mouth and nose. So I have them loosely in here, and if only two fit, that's fine, two fit. Typically, uh, the blood pressure cuff can be in a bag placed here because it's well protected, but you could also have it loose here on, uh, on top of the tank so that you can easily pull it out and set it aside just as long as it's protected notice too in the off chance that um, you have multiple casualties you have some paperwork here set aside that allows you to deal with that these are triage tags and of course you have some minor injury tags and directions to to the hospital to the nearby hospitals and of course, no O2 kit would be complete without our pocket masks. This pocket mask can be used on a CPR scenario, or you can uh, simply use it for an airway. Make sure you have the filter that, go along with the, that goes along with the pocket mask. That's pretty much it for the main compartment. This is our next biggest compartment here and probably the next most important you hopefully you never have to open this in your uh, lifetime as a lifeguard or EMR but if you do this is where the bag valve masks are this is for a CPR or someone who does is not breathing this is a good way to put oxygen in a person because it doesn't over inflate their lungs so you don't cause gastric dis distension. It's really easy to open these things. The drawback to uh, back valve masks are that it usually takes two people to do this because it's awkward when you uh, put the air in there. So you can just extend these, put a regular pocket mask on, on here. Make sure you inflate it with oxygen. The oxygen tube connects to here and onto the oxygen bottle and you're set to go to give air when you put things back, in case you do need to, or when you resupply, please go real slow and be real gentle. The last thing you want is to pull out equipment and it's not working. It doesn't serve you well at all. Most of our trauma packs have the word adult, child, and infant written on here so that when you're stressed out, you can more easily 
recognize what you need. Once again, the cold packs, I usually have two or three of them in here, are kind of sitting loosely and this is for a life-threatening injury, usually heat stroke, not for twisted ankles or anything like that. We can use our minor first aid kit for that. This is what you would, might say it's a minor first aid kit, but really there's a lot of things here that can be used in a major trauma. Specifically the sodium chloride irrigation fluid. This is when you have stuff in your eye or if you have a major burn, this is when I recommend you use this. Otherwise, just use normal uh, clean water for other stuff. We don't have a lot of it and we don't really need to use it each and every time. Band-Aids, in case you have a, a major med medical first aid with the minor together. You have all your typical stuff that you would have in a minor first aid kit are all here. We have only two items here. And some of these trauma packs actually have written on here, nasal cannula pediatric mask. You have two nasal cannulas with, here's the two nasals with two pediatric non-rebreathing masks. So the way I like to pack this is I like to put the pediatric masks in first and then the nasal cannulas just sort of, excuse me, sort of wrap around the mouth of the mask. That way it protects, protects the mask real well and uh, you have the equipment necessary. Two other things I'd like to add real quick though before we uh, move on. In conjunction with the trauma pack, we have a small bag, either blue or orange. It's some of them say extrication collars on there. And uh, what we have here are bed heads for C spine injuries. These are the things that hold a head in place on a backboard. And we have cervical collars of different sizes. And um, I usually have at least one or two cardboard splints here in case somebody breaks an arm or something like that. One last item that we have that usually goes with the whole kit. We recently uh, have been fortunate enough to be able to purchase enough AEDs so that we have an AED for every unit here in the uh, Angeles district. And uh, the AED is very simple. If you look here to this light, if it's green, that means this AED will function properly when uh, deployed. Lifeguard, we're here to help you. God damn. 